In this lecture, presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to continue our practice of trigonometric derivatives by doing problems 3 and 4 out of the textbook. Now, problem 3 presents us with an interesting dilemma. We have sine of x divided by x, and this should be immediately ringing a bell in your head that this is f divided by g, which would imply that we use the quotient rule. Well, that's a perfectly legitimate way to go about this problem, but it's not the easiest. Let's do the quotient rule, and then I'm going to show you the easier way of doing this problem to get the answer. So anyways, we have f is equal to sine of x, so we'll need f prime, which is the derivative of sine of x, which is equal to cosine of x. Now I have this over on the right here. I have all the different formulas we're going to be using on the trig derivatives, so you can check those at any time, but it is important that you do memorize them. Moving on, we're going to need g and g prime. g is equal to x, so g prime is going to be equal to 1. Now recall your quotient rule formula is g prime times f minus, oh, I'm sorry, it's uh, g times f prime, thought that looked wrong, g times f prime minus f times g prime divided by g squared. We have all the different elements there, so it's just a matter of plugging them, plugging the f's and the g's and the f primes and the g primes into our formula to get the answer. So we have x, which is g, times f prime, which is cosine of x, minus f, which is sine of x, times g prime, which is 1. And this is all divided by g squared, which is x squared. Now let me change my color here, and let's do this the easier way. The easier way is going to be to rewrite f of x as x to the negative first times sine of x in which case we can just simply use the product rule. f prime will be equal to, or f of x prime is equal to f prime g plus g prime f, with f being x in negative 1 and g being sine of x in this case. So let me make, clear up a little bit of room here. We called f is equal to x in negative first, and g is equal to sine of x. So f prime is going to be negative x to the negative 2, and g prime is going to be equal to cosine of x. Let's put all of that together, and let's get our derivative. F, of, f prime of x is going to be equal to f prime times g, negative 1 over x squared, and g is sine of x, and this is going to be plus g prime, which is sine of x, times f, which is 1 over x. Sorry, g prime is cosine of x. That looks a lot better. So we got negative sine of x squared sine of x over x squared plus cosine of x over x. But that doesn't look exactly the same. However, you can demonstrate fairly easily that this is mathematically the same thing. And we're going to start with using the quotient rule, x cosine of x over x squared minus sine of x over x squared. Notice what I did here is I just split apart the fractions. Um, because we have the numerator, added or subtracted together, we can divide through the denominator in each side. Now, all we need to do is cancel 1x with the denominator and rearrange the terms here. And we get negative sine of x over x squared plus cosine of x divided by x, which is exactly the same thing we got using the product rule. So that's good. We always want these to turn out exactly the same if we do it right. But the other important thing is, is we want to use the method that's easy for us. And I always prefer to use the product rule if it's more convenient than the quotient rule, which it often is. 
Anyways, let's go on to do problem four. Problem four is nice because this is obviously a product rule lecture or a question. We had f of x equals x squared times the cosine of x. So we'll call f is equal to x squared and g is cosine of x. We'll need f prime and we'll need g prime. g prime is the derivative of the cosine of x which is negative sine of x. And the derivative of x squared is 2x. So f prime of x is going to equal f prime g plus g prime f, our friendly product rule. So let's plug all the different values in. f prime is 2x times g, which is cosine of x, plus g prime negative sine of x times f, which is x squared. Which notice in that very last step here, I just immediately rewritten, rewrote it instead of sine of x times x squared, I wrote it as x squared sine of x, and that positive sign becomes irrelevant. So there we have the derivative of problem four.